Hello. Welcome back to another week of lives. We're super excited to be here, especially because not only are we doing these lives, but we, our doors are open to the public, um, which has just been such a joy to see people in the space and hearing laughing and curiosity and questions and everything like that just all over the exhibit floor. So thanks to all who have stopped by. If you haven't come on down, definitely come on down and check us out. Um, especially because we have some of those new exhibits that we've shown in some of the past lives, uh, but you can come and see them for yourself. But today, we're going to do a little bit of a story time, so we decided that it might be cool to talk a little bit about the history of Great Lakes Aquarium. Um, so this year, in 2020, is our 20th year anniversary. So the aquarium has been open for 20 years, which is amazing. There's probably some of you watching this video that weren't even born when the aquarium opened. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the history. So we have our Great Lakes Aquarium, a history book right here. Um, we decided to do it right outside our doors so that way we could be looking at the building that was built way back those 20 years ago um, and tell a little bit more of what happened to get where we are. So without further ado, we have our good story listeners. We have little Alex Morgan and Larry and Otter. This is a sturgeon. Um, and this is this is a fish as well. Um, I realize only two of these actually have names. So, But they're very curious about what's going to happen in this story. So, <clears throat> <clears throat> clear my throat. Let's see here. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yes. Stay where you are. <clears throat> Once upon a time, in 1998, there was a dream of a place that could be for all to learn about the animals we share our local ecosystems with right here on the shores of Lake Superior. Now, it seemed like a big dream, but there were many people committed to that dream. One of those would be the sisters Julia and Caroline Marshall, who donated the land of which we sit today, as well as the visions of Holt Hinshaw, who had the idea of what this building could be. Now, the construction of the building took three and a half years. So although the ideas of what was once called the Lake Superior Center, now today known as Great Lakes Aquarium, it was back in 1998. The building itself did not open to the public until July 29th, 2000. What a glorious day that was. News crews came, people came. It was a beautiful day. I've even seen video footage from that day, and I wish I would have been here. I wasn't living in Duluth back then, but I heard it was amazing. Anyways, back to the story. <clears throat> So that dream came to its physical form, and with the support of state, local, and private funds, we now sit here at Great Lakes Aquarium. It's lovely so far. Yes, I like this part. Ah, yes. Oh. But every good story does have some hardships, and the hero must persevere through those times. So this part of the story definitely reminds me of, Abby, what's that one? Um, it's the, the animals that the Lake Superior Zoo has now. Oh, it's the, about the bears. The bears, yeah. Yeah. Lake Superior Zoo. Yeah. Goldie so, Lots. it reminds me of the three bears, Goldilocks and the three bears. So, let's, uh, oh, this, this book has, has pictures. Cool. So, as I said, in 2000, the doors opened, but things weren't quite right. It seemed to get a little too warm, like the porridge of Papa Bear. So in 2000 to 2003, things just weren't right. And so the city decided we should change things. So then from 2002 until 2003, the city came in and started making some changes. But like I said, it wasn't quite right. So then it switched over to management by Ripley's Entertainment Inc. That's right, 
You may have heard that name as Ripley's Believe It or Not. They came in from 2003 to 2007 and they made a lot of changes. Now, again, it just wasn't right. It wasn't the right fit. It wasn't the right forage. So then, in 2008, the ownership and run management of the aquarium changed a little bit. And instead, Jack Lavoie was appointed executive director. And Jack Lavoie stayed here until 2017 and boy did we see some beautiful things. That porridge was just right. And in all of those changes, many lessons were learned, many animals have called this place home, and many exhibits have continued to change. Today, we see Great Lakes Aquarium as a bustling place of excitement, as well, I gotta turn the page. There we go. Oh, the story is so good. I so interesting. We see an annual attendance of 176,000 plus people. That's pretty amazing. And a booming staff of creatives and animal lovers and dedicated folks who really strive to see that mission of connecting people with the waters of Lake Superior, the ecosystems and waters of the world. And in the end, our final way of how we manage everything. Great Lakes Aquarium is technically owned by the Lake Superior Center Authority, a state agency, who owns the building and the land, while the nonprofit Great Lakes Aquarium, which is a 501c, wow, what fun words today, 501c nonprofit, uh, where was I? Oh yes, <clears throat> 501c nonprofit, runs within the building. Did you know that? Really? Huh. Larry's pretty smart. Larry, Larry's pretty smart. And with that, funding comes from date receipts, program fees, membership sales, donations, grants, retail and parking, and the operational support from the tourism taxes of the city of Duluth. Wow, what nice folks. What nice folks. Now, it is pretty interesting during COVID-19, this is a very interesting chapter of the book, we did close for a while, but thanks to the amazing support of our community, our friends, our families, and people all over the United States have helped us keep our doors open today, come check us out, as well as continue the care of all the animals that call it home. There are thousands of animals that live here, and many, many exhibits oh, gotta turn the page. that can be seen. Yeah, I was on the wrong page. As well as population served everyone from toddlers to college students, K through 12, families, adults, youth, educators, bumblebees. Look at that, the bumblebees even wants to get inside. Mm -hmm. right. Bumblebee, you gotta stay outside. You gotta go through the front doors, not the back doors. Okay. <clears throat> as well as anyone who would like to visit. I'm not gonna say the end, because there's still a lot that's going on here at Great Lakes Aquarium, even with the changes and everything that's going on. But we continue to make great partnerships with people and organizations all over. Larry here actually comes from an aquarium we've worked with before, that's the Tennessee Aquarium. Very nice to have you here, Larry. As well as zoos and aquariums across the country, like I said, we work with them, uh, learning more about different animals, putting animals in different places based on what their needs are, all of that stuff, as well as working with organizations all throughout the city. So again, I'm not gonna say the end because there's still more story to write and to tell. But thanks for tuning in for this small snippet of the story of Great Lakes Aquarium, so the history. And I hope you come in and stop by and see the place for yourself. Um, like I said, there's a lot of really amazing things going on, some cool exhibits to see, as well as some of the best views in Duluth. We have the lift bridge right over here. We'll continue with lives 
every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. So you can follow in on those at 1 o'clock. Otherwise, definitely keep checking out our website for more information, some more digital content. Uh, there still is a little bit of openings for our summer camp in a box. If you're interested in that, we just finished up the first week last week, and it was super fun. Um, it was so great to do those activities and seeing what the kids are accomplishing at home. So amazing. Thank you so much for tuning in all, from all of our friends here. We appreciate all the support that you all give, and have a good day.